Hey, folks. Awesome. Okay, I think that we are live. Welcome, everyone, to another Safe Community Stand Up. This will be a great one because this one was a request that a lot of you have been uh, emailing me and have asked. It's going to be a complete session of a live Q&A. So uh, I hope you guys came with a lot of questions and we already have a lot of in the queue, so we will be uh, covering all of those. So with me is uh, Jose, Manuel, Dennis, and Dave, uh, he sent me a message that he will be joining us later. He has a meeting with the client exactly at this time, but he most probably will be joining us in, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. So before moving forward, uh, I want to let everyone introduce themselves. I don't think that none of these guys need introductions, but please, Jose. Jose. Well, I think that Jose got disconnected or something. Manuel, you wanna <laughs> take over? Hi, Manuel. I am a DevExpress MVP since I don't know anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, have a nice time. So we have a, a, a special guest today on camera. It's Dennis. Hello. Uh, hello, Dennis. I, I want to say thank you for showing up here with us to sharing, like I know that for you it's really late to taking the time out of your night to talk to us about what we uh, are passionate about, that is SAF XPO and uh, uh, that's what we do every day. I'm, I'm admitting uh, more people that are getting in, so sorry, it's little. So, okay, let's uh, move forward. I always, before we start these meetings, I always like to say, please join the community. We have our Facebook group that is already almost 700 members. Our meetup that we meet every second Thursday or every month, where we talk about stuff, we talk about XPO, personal products, share our experience, we collaborate, we have some questions. Uh, uh, in Safer Weekly, I want to just quickly point out, and we'll get to all those announcements, but we want to see about the OAuth provider that uh, SAF Laser is coming with in 20.2, that is already there. If you have domain components that is not going to be able to move to SAF Blazor. Right here are the guidelines so how you can move that to pure XPO classes. Uh, I did a blog post on how to use the DevExpress that dashboard on the Blazor server side. Manuel did an awesome blog post on uh, the N plus one problem of the ORM. Highly recommended and he will give his two cents in a little bit. We have a lot of questions also about those. Uh, Jose and I have been doing some uh, playing with some load testing and he did a quick video on how to prepare a Linux server for that. Apostle, he has done, a, as always, amazing job. He has a lot of new modules that is coming up. I love uh, seeing uh, Safer drinking beer with us, so let's cheers to that. We never see that. We always are all, so thank you. Uh, and uh, again, follow Saf on Twitter. I'm proud that we are in the same number. We're like twins, 697, 696 our Facebook group and uh, Twitter. Our LinkedIn group has also almost 3,000 members. If you want to get a quick, uh, quick answer to your question and you don't have to wait to the meetup, you have uh, the Gitter chat that Manuel created with Sa Dennis, that is the uh, PM for SAF, is always there answering questions and you also get answers uh, from another uh, SAFers. And uh, this is a Manuel blog that he shares a lot of really nice information. He will be talking about this blog post in specific in a little bit. And uh, before we move forward, we always have to uh, share this. We are part of the .NET Foundation user group. And they always ask us, like, uh, because they do a promotion to our user group, they also always ask us to tell these two lines. Please go to the .NET virtual user group. There are a lot, a lot of nice uh, meetups and uh, nice events that you can, like, in, about Azure, about Blazor, about anything .NET related, so please uh, visit them. They, those are amazing resources if you want to, to grow in the community. And I think that with that out of the way, uh, we pretty much are going to jump straight to, to, to our questions. Dennis has prepared for us a quick uh, presentation about 20.2 uh, teasers, more relevant, relevant questions. And then we go straight to Manuel and his blog post. And then I have a lot of more questions. And please, everyone that is in the chat, don't hold back. Put as many questions as you have. Everything that you can think of. It doesn't have to be SAF Blazor, SAF Web, SAF Window, XPO, 
anything that you have been dying to ask, this is the moment. We're going to get to every question. I did promise that, guarantee. Every question will get an answer or a follow-up. So, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, please, Dennis, you want to take care from here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jose. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm happy to see you here. And also in German, danke, dass Sie alle gekommen sind. Ich freue mich, Sie zu sehen. Because we have a lot of German customers, I guess. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me take screen. I do want to thank everyone who is here with us and has shown up to talk with us about Suffix, we love everything we love. I always am amazed at the, the response of the community and to see so many of you taking it the, the morning or the night of a Saturday or of a Thursday to talk with us about this. So please, Danny. Uh, guys, can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Uh, okay. okay start yeah, it's, it's starting. Okay, uh, as you know, uh, version 20.2 is coming and I want you to quickly uh, describe uh, some breaking changes, some known issues, some new features. And I first, I, uh, I want to quickly describe some best practices that are often uh, missing in pro projects. And I want to start uh, from the importance of uh, change notifications. Uh, as you know, uh, when you write uh, an XPO uh, classes, you usually call uh, set property value from property setters. And uh, this is important because uh, this arises change notifications and informs XAF and uh, controls uh, about uh, data changes so that uh, UI can be adjusted and uh, we, uh, how to say, in 20.2, we uh, have a, a, ch a change. Uh, so uh, for perf performance uh, reasons, uh, now, uh, if you, for example, if you type anything, anything in text editor or some spin editor, if you, uh, type uh, change value, uh, these changes are not uh, propagated uh, immediately for, per for performance uh, reasons. And you can control this behavior using this uh, static option. Uh, I, I will post uh, a link to chat to, uh, to the change so we can uh, research uh, more. And uh, also we have a documentation article about uh, the importance of uh, property change events. Here you can see a typical uh, property in XPO and also you can implement a similar thing in non-persistent objects and in entity framework. Okay, uh, next I wanted to talk about uh, old uh, WinForms uh, templates. Uh, as you probably know, uh, six years ago, we, we have implemented uh, new templates that support um, so-called uh, white style. Uh, there's, uh, these new templates also support um, customization um, uh, a powerful customization at design time. And uh, you uh, may know about uh, this, uh, this option, use all templates. Uh, by default, it's uh, uh, in, in, by default in new XF projects from 14.2, it's uh, set to false in solution wizard. And uh, we recommend uh, you switch to this uh, configuration 
uh, use all templates uh, equals false uh, because uh, it's recommended and we no longer support uh, these old templates and there may be issues. For example, recently we have uh, an issue in 21.7 uh, where uh, changes uh, in controls, they were not uh, propagated back, back to data model. And uh, we made an exception and we have fixed it for all templates uh, for the next uh, minor version. But I strongly recommend you to switch to the new templates in your projects. Uh, also, uh, another uh, known issue, it's uh, related to 20.2.2, uh, 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 beta version. It's uh, related to Azure deployment, uh, Azure deployment of uh, Blazor apps. So th there is some known issue with, uh, with uh, signal error and uh, we hope to get it fixed in the final release. Uh, anyway, uh, it's still possible to test uh, Blazor apps with, with uh, better on IEs or Nginx. Uh, I yeah. will move to breaking changes if you have yeah, any comments. Yeah, before, before moving to breaking changes, real quick to comment on the, on the, those changes. So the, the Blazor deployment to Azure, we have been done that successfully on 20.1.6 20 20 and 0.7 without no issue. We have to do, I think, some, I, I, we have a video on our YouTube channel, some small change. So I don't know what is the, the issue on the 20.2, but we have successfully deployed. And I actually we have a few there, so no issue whatsoever. And Jose has deployed to, Jose is always more Linux and I'm more Azure. And uh, he has always uh, deployed to Linux, to NGX, no issue whatsoever. And I have deployed to Azure App Service perfectly. Also to Apache, Javier, like we have like in Linux, Apache and, and, and NGX, and they are running fine so far. Um, okay. I, I, have, uh, I have a small uh, uh, question on, on, on the uh, um, uh, non-persistent objects, uh, on, on non-persistent non objects. Uh, then is uh, there, there was the, or there is the concept of non-persistent objects in the XBO. Is this like a, a, a is this more like a, a, an object space level based approach and doesn't have anything to do with with the non-persistent objects in XBO? Um, yeah, XBO itself uh, it supports uh, non-persistent classes uh, and yeah. and you you can use uh, this uh, non-persistent attribute. But uh, it's uh, different from what we have in XF. So in XF we have uh, uh, plain. So it's, it's more feature. It's more feature parity. It's, it's, it's a little, uh, a little bit lower. It says okay, uh, any class that uh, implements I know for pro property change. We had that change a, a couple of, of of releases ago with the non-persistent object space. And now you will provide like a base class that you can inherit so uh, you don't have, uh, uh, when you interact with lists and stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, we, okay. we yeah. Um, these are a bit different concepts, but we, for for better usability, we provided uh, this base uh, uh, class. Yeah. Um, just to help users um, implement this boilerplate code with yeah. properties. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 I think I know what, 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 what the difference is and where the differences are in the, in the framework. Just to make clear that it's, 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 it is non-persistent by, uh, in, 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 uh, cause it's just in memory, but it isn't under the hood have anything to do with XPO non-persistent yeah. classes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's the point I, I was making. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's are two different things. Uh, well, uh, let's uh, move to breaking changes. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a small change in uh, Entity Framework Core uh, NuGet package. 
uh, we had to split it into two assemblies to because now as you know we support entity framework core three and also five so we have to make two assemblies uh what else um yeah the security the security system that is initialized initialized as a configured service it, it by us because we did the change database on runtime in 20.1.6 something and then when it, it updated that they changed the security system initialization we have to redo that part it was not bad at all but it was completely that's the the the, the issue when we are working with the beta that thing can change and, and but it's really you're, nice but it's really nice now and if you're that early but i think it's the right decision to do it in 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 the services layer uh the the question i have then is is Mm -hmm. Is there is there any um, uh, uh, thoughts from the team to put uh, that strength uh, strength of 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 DI into WinForms? Um, or not immediate? I, I, I was the first one suggesting DI for XF Win. Uh, 10 years ago or something like this so it's it's a i think it's a valid question from my part uh, yeah uh, we discussed it uh, earlier with you and um, right now uh, we don't uh, have specific plans on, on this for blazer is uh, more important because uh, you know platform dictates what to do so yeah. we don't have uh, much choice here so uh, we tried to describe this change uh, as much as we could, and uh, actually, it's uh, just a copy paste, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, but I think it's it's the right decision to 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 yeah. get that uh, cross cutting concern into another layer. So. Uh, next, I wanted to um, talk about uh, changes uh, in schedule uh, API. Um, as you know, we have some, we had some cross-platform API like reminder info, recurrence info, uh, etc. And in 20.1, uh, they were part of or of a .NET framework assembly. And in uh, October, we made uh, this uh, cross-platform API part of uh, .NET standard assembly. So it helps some uh, guys who create, uh, sh who share uh, schedule logic across different applications. Uh, well, uh, Oh, what else? Uh, this one is interesting. It's about uh, default um, settings. As you probably know, uh, when you create a new XIF application uh, via uh, Solution Wizard, uh, it creates a lot of, it sets a lot of default options. Just an example. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, about 20 uh, options and uh, they are growing and we decided to simplify this um, part for customers because, um, as you know, uh, when you upgrade to the next version, uh, you have to, if you created your solution two years ago, you have to uh, update your settings. And now it's uh, it's uh, much e easier because you can just specify w one option. And uh, for example, if you uh, want to use uh, the wait the latest, uh, you just uh, set uh, version twenty point uh, two. I I really really love that one, especially if you come back to a little bit older XF application. Uh, and you want to upgrade and, and use some new features. It, 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 it totally works in production. It's fine. You don't have to update. But if you if you grab it uh, and 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 use uh, uh, and and want to use a new feature, for example, because there was a, a customer request uh, going through all the hassle, comparing uh, templates, what are the new defaults, 
uh, does work. Normally stuff don't break, but sometimes you need some of the new stuff. So I think it's a, it's an awesome option just to drop in and say, okay, last version was 21 and uh, now it's 22 and you changed literally a few characters and test your application or go to the latest version if you're uh, uh, on an unrolling version. So you're working yeah. constantly on the, on the, uh, on the, on the project. That, that's really, really, it saves so much time. Yeah. Yeah. And we inherited this concept from our WinForms controls. They also, uh, as you probably know, they have um, like, uh, an API like Venus Forms settings. Uh, settings. One, one question. If you don't specify the version, will it always be latest or? Yeah, it's latest is default. Yeah, okay, cool. So if I see this line and it's not a, not a latest, I will delete it. Because <laughs> it's boilerplate from my perspective, but it, it's, 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 it's good to have the option. Especially if you're on CI CD builds and stuff like this. Okay, okay. Let me move uh, forward because I have like 10 slides. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, okay. I, I, I will roll back with questions. <laughs> I, I quickly want to quickly just, it will be a second. Talking about the DevExpress uh, Entity Framework called Nuget Package. We have today uh, like 25 people on the chat with us. And again, thank you for participating with us. This is amazing. I ask in the chat, how many people use Entity Framework that are here? And me, myself, personal, I, I don't, I know for the tickets, Kristen Greed or two or three more that I follow on the support center. But personally, I don't know one person that you serve with Entity Framework. So maybe then it's, you do? I did. Yeah, of course, of course I do. <laughs> yeah, but how, how big is that, that uh, audience? Let's say that. I I will not uh, expose the numbers, of course, uh, <laughs> but uh, this is uh, how to say. I want to emphasize that uh, uh, there are entity framework users, and it's a fact. And uh, you should not see entity framework as a replacement for XPO. It's just another data access option for other customers who like this or or M2. And Actually, I think it will make sense if you have already developed something on Entity Framework and you just want the UI. Um, because I will say that, uh, yes, you can take apart the, the ORM from most applications, but then to take everything. So if you take apart your, your ORM that is already tested, you know it's working, and then you can hook it up to a SAF UI, then it's really neat. I mean... So and I guess it is useful for other people that and, don't and come from XPO. And sometimes it's a better option. If you're, if you're more read heavy, uh, I guess it's, it's uh, if, if you're more read heavy, uh, I, I think uh, Entity Framework uh, can provide some benefits. Uh, if you're going to do data pro projections and stuff like this, or if you have to talk like to database providers, uh, that are lower the line or you don't have the expertise and somebody wrote an EF provider, for example, to, an, to a database you don't have access to, for example, uh, it can be the valuable choice for some kind of application. So it's just the right tool for the right thing and uh, XF will fit into that. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. I treat it like a habit. So some people love uh, apples, some people like oranges. So yes, yeah, yeah. Be, be it. And uh, you know, I even uh, know customers who used XF is uh, and Hibernate. Yeah, so they oh, we did. Well, we did. Well, <laughs> well we did actually, Hibernate, yeah? yesterday I was doing like talking about the non-persistent object space. I got like all the information from that, and I uh, and I connected with Mongo. I was doing the UI in, in SAF and the data come from MongoDB. We, uh, uh, we, we should do a one-on-one a, a -on, -one on that. I, will, I, will, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, I always it's, wanted to do something like this. So, okay. 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 I let's move forward. Yeah. Move forward. 
Yeah, uh, I want you to uh, go to the next point. Uh, it's, it's about non-persistent objects. Um, we have introduced an exception when a uh, non-persistent object doesn't have a key property. Uh, we did it uh, because uh, it's, uh, in general, it's an uh, invalid situation and uh, UI controls, uh, web UI controls uh, will not work correctly if uh, they don't have a, a key. Uh, key, key field. So now to help uh, developers detect such uh, corrupted uh, situations earlier, we throw an exception. And to uh, also to uh, help developers uh, not to think about key properties or change notifications, notifications, we have specially introduced this uh, base class. So because it already has a, a key property and it uh, guarantees unique values. So just inherit from it and go on. Uh, this one is small. We just changed uh, protected uh, content, content uh, text to Asterix, just to be uh, to have it uh, less noisy in, in the UI. Uh, and also, uh, this one is important. Uh, as you probably know, uh, before uh, XF Blazor, we uh, had a preview of uh, mobile UI uh, based on. Uh, knockout.js and also phone gap and uh, this uh, uh, mobile UI uh, was not out of preview and uh, after three year, years we deprecated it and uh, removed it from installation in 20.2. Uh, and we hope that uh, users will find our Blazor uh, UI helpful because it also supports uh, mobile browsers. I'm definitely sure that everyone in the chat want to talk about more about stuff like and let anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me move quickly to the next slide. Uh, it's uh, I I get this question quite often: how to master XAF, how to learn it faster, and I want to just uh, give uh, three tips uh, that helped uh, me more than ten years ago and uh, help other a lot of other people. So uh, as you know, we have a large knowledge base and a large online documentation is hundreds of examples. We also have uh, our own search engine, search.dxpress.com. Also, a lot of people use Google. So you can literally find anything in these free learning materials. And if you just uh, search. Also, what helps uh, a lot is reading code. So reading code of demos, examples, even XF source, source code, because as you know, uh, we ship the full source code for our components. And you, it's uh, very um, helpful to research it, to inherit the best practice that you uh, can find in documentation maybe find some advanced uh, scenarios. Uh, for example, in uh, 20.1 for Blazor, we did not have, uh, we did not have uh, much docu documentation because it was in CTP, but uh, guys like uh, Jose, Jose Manuel, they already could create uh, custom property editors and uh, custom list editors uh, and this advanced stuff and you can see it easily in the XAF source code because uh, XAF, uh, all the standard XAF property and list editors, they use the same approaches and you can just look at this code as an, use it as some documentation. Uh, 
Uh, what else uh, is important? Uh, De Dennis, I, I, uh, on, on this part, I, I just want to, to uh, throw one cent in there. Um, it, it is the best uh, kind of, of source for, for uh, doing uh, really complicated stuff, not document uh, learning from you guys how you solve problems. The hardest part on that thing is, is uh, from example, for the editor's perspective, like with the model editor and stuff like this, to go on par with the DevExpress ecosystem. So uh, uh, what you guys provide uh, on, on editors in, inside the uh, model editor and stuff like this, this is really, really, really the hard part. Uh, but if you are fine with uh, writing a property editor, reusing it, uh, and can live with, um, you don't have to, to have an editor on the, on the uh, uh, developer side for every stuff. Uh, it's not hard. It's not complicated. If you've done it once, you can repeat it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also wanted to uh, refer to a great article we have now online documentation. It describes uh, all the UI elements we have. Uh, so, like list views, detail views. One thing that oh, that's awesome, uh, yeah. I actually have a software yesterday asked me like that he has been used stuff before, but one of the things that I got discouraged is about the customization and the UI and things and things that you can accomplish. And that got me thinking, I think that at some point I would like to have, uh, or at least everyone that is here in the chat or everyone that had at some point done any customization in the UI on stuff, just take a screenshot and post it. I wanna show everyone the things that you can really accomplish if you know how to get the underlying control and modify because people, a lot of people have the conceptions that you cannot modify, that you cannot make it better. And I, like my, my soft point of sale teaser that I have in my blog, that was just a list view, detail view mode with some pictures, that's it. And I, and I use from Yamachan the font size controller and the, a touch something that I don't even remember, but it was not hard at all. So uh, I'm gonna uh, let Dennis continue, but one thing that I would like at some point is to have like a soft showcase that we can have like like the fitness, like the gym on, I don't remember the company that did a really soft customization web UI. If anyone else have another point of sales, if he has another, just take a screenshot, let's post this, let's show that we can definitely do crazy and beautiful things with soft. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jose. Uh, so we have uh, a, a schema of all inner elements like template, like window, list view, action containers. And if you understand these uh, concepts and their relationships, you you can implement any any customization you can imagine. Absolutely any. Uh, I will also post uh, this uh, link to the chat later and go to the next slide. Uh, let's talk about Blazor. So uh, it's quite popular question, question now. Um, as you probably know, we have uh, two installers, one for dot, uh, .NET Framework and one for uh, .NET Core WinForms components. And uh, currently, uh, we, uh, we cannot uh, make a solution of wizard so that it includes bo both options. So for now we have separate templates, one for Blazor and one for WinForms uh, .NET Core applications. But I hope uh, next year we'll try to merge these installers into one and uh, help uh, users create uh, a solution for both Windows and web in one click. Uh, meanwhile, you can uh, just create uh, two solutions and copy paste manually. Uh, if there is any need from the community to do this more often, we can think of a, a template you can invoke from a command line 
Uh, I did this for for Scissors uh, three years ago or something like this. So uh, it shouldn't be that hard to fill that gap until uh, Visual Studio supports this. I I think it's the, that's the main problem with uh, having uh, two separate templates right now. Or uh, no, the main problem is that there are two installers and uh, oh, they okay. Uh, uh, it's it's, it's a, uh, okay. Yeah. Two different but sets of if, if, you, if, you, if you base it on NuGet, for example, you can just make one template, for example, or separate templates that, that uh, cover both needs. Uh, yeah. Or, so or, or do a unified thing, yeah. There are options, but they have... Uh, Drawbacks they... from, 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 uh, from DevExpress sites, of course, yeah. But if there is any, uh, just let know in the comments. So. But I, I think that's fine, yeah. Hey guys, like, sorry to interrupt, but I want to give a shout to someone in the chat. Someone sent me a private message that, um, that they own the DevExpress Universal subscription, but they don't use, they didn't use SAF before. And they say that they start using SAF because they check our YouTube channel that is in Spanish because they, they, I mean, the messages in Spanish, they're from Latin America. So they say that they learn stuff by watching the, our videos in Spanish. So cool. that's really cool. And also that they are migrating an application. They used to only use the controls, but the person convinced the, uh, the management to move to SAF, to do faster development and to move to web because they are only uh, Windows Forms um, team right now. So to use web without knowing web, you can use SAF basically if you have the same concept of application. So, no, well, it's, it's a great, it's great to hear that. And one thing that yeah, I always cool. say to learn SAF, join the community. And Manuel have a blog post that we talk about community later after uh, Dennis presentation. But join the community, read the source code, where read the ticket, the support center tickets. That is a gold mine that you have right there. I remember when I start, I. I download the PDF version of the DevExpress documentation, and I read it everywhere in my in the bus on my way everywhere. I was reading all the, the without putting a line of code. Then I get home, I start repeating what I learned. Believe me, they have a lot of great great information, and it has been better and better because every time that sometimes they was not documented, and now I come back and it's there. It's like hey, I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out, and look how nice they put it out now. Yeah, um, I just uh, recalled uh, my first day with XAF in 20, uh, 2007, I guess. And uh, we have a documentation and it had only 20 pages <laughs> for XAF. And now we have maybe 10,000 or so. Great. <laughs> Great, yeah. And yeah. with samples, with code, with because that's the other thing, you can also see uh, the modules from Apostle, the modules from Jose, code from Manuel, you can see sample code that the controller management model from Yamachan, all those free models, you can go to the repo, there is free, you can read it, you can ask them and they will be willing to help. So it's a great community that is also growing by the day. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dennis, Dennis, I, I just posted a link from my blog where I commented, it's from uh, July 2012. So it's a really, really long time ago. <laughs> so it's like eight years ago. And we were much more arguing about technology and stuff and blah. And it was the, it was the uh, post about old data and uh, like this all mobile stuff. And we were really, really on the, on the tip of the edge. But it is the thing talking about solution problems. And, and hey, it, it, we are here now, it's 2020. And uh, yeah, and we started some way along. So yeah, and we're here. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me uh, quickly describe uh, the next uh, uh, answer. The next uh, popular question: uh, As you know, people build uh, XAF uh, apps and also non-XAF apps, and they use. XPO or entity framework, and uh, they ask how to reuse uh, their data models and some logic. 
uh, for non-XAF uh, UI platforms. And it's, uh, of course, it's possible. We have a, a lot of uh, examples for XPO without uh, any XAF. You can find them on GitHub. So we cover WinForms, ASP.NET. Uh, it also includes uh, Blazor, MVC Core, or data v4 and also examples with uh, the extreme uh, web forms controls and even xamarin and we also have uh, we have uh, xf examples specifically for security system uh, again for both xpo and entity framework uh, there are also many examples. Uh, you can uh, check it out if you also want to uh, use uh, your uh, permissions, users, roles. So it's all possible. Check these uh, articles and don't hesitate to ask uh, our support team if you have any questions. Uh, to the next slide. Uh, it's uh, about uh, Blazor and the, any .NET Core uh, apps uh, because, um, as you probably know, um, uh, there is no uh, Visual Studio designers uh, support uh, in .NET Core or .NET Standard projects, and uh, you cannot, uh, for example, uh, design uh, a view controller in uh, an XAF Blazor application. So you cannot drag and drop uh, actions from toolbox uh, currently and or drag and drop uh, modules from toolbox. And uh, right now uh, it's still possible to perform this task and it's quite uh, easy because just a few lines of code because uh, designer, it just generates a line of code like, let me show you something, something like, like this. I put a survey on the Facebook group, like, I don't know, a long time ago, like a year ago. And I asked, uh, what designers do you guys really use? And most of the, of the suppers there, they say only the model designer, like for, for module and for controllers, they always use directly on code. So that's a really, and I always like that go to the designer, do it and then see that the line go, was generated, so. Yeah, uh, I also, um, I'm using only code myself and I know a lot of customers who only inherit from like object view controller, specify list view, detail view, or business object type and just, Right code. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, I, I, I wrote about this uh, uh, a couple of years ago. I think uh, uh, the industry is shifting towards uh, 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 code first, I guess. So uh, if you talk about ASP.NET Core with, with uh, for example, the, the, the IACD, uh, this dependency injection system where you can uh, uh, do the discovery by uh, the IntelliSense is is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So you have one code block you have in control and don't have the um, uh, uh, code behind style of of working. Um, but I have to I have to say for the for the beginner the designers are nice. You drag an I, action I, I, and I, you I, have it there. And for example, myself, I don't use, I have a shortcut for controller for adding an action, but let's say that I want to clone a view. I go to the model, clone it, boom, good to go quickly. No, uh, uh, for, for view code or, 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 or more uh, visual stuff, uh, it's it's totally fine to use the designer. I, I don't, uh, it, it is a tool uh, uh, that's, that's used in, that's really, really, really valuable. Uh, just that the thing I'm saying is uh, more people are going towards code-only style of uh, uh, things uh, and use designers where you really need them because it's too complicated or you need the visual feedback. 
Um, yeah, yeah, uh, and and, and, and for for example, for actions or controllers or the modules, it's like a couple of 10, 10 lines of code or something like this. Uh, it's basically what you're saying here. Uh, it's it's a simple action makes a simple action. It's a it's a constructor. Put it in your code. Uh, you don't need a designer for uh, this kind of stuff. That that that's the the thinking about it. Yeah, and we uh, at this time we, as you know, we uh, uh, provide uh, the model editor because yeah. um, design that's process is more complicated. So it's an exception. Totally, totally different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me move to the next slide and just want to uh, promote a solution to quite a uh, common problem. Uh, if you see uh, your uh, business class um, uh, fully qualified name along with a key value, it uh, means that you are missing uh, default property. And you can specify it uh, using XF default property attribute. And uh, it's, uh, I would say it's a must have procedure for every business class and uh, it's, it's quite. The, it's the most pitfall or the most uh, uh, confusing uh, concept for beginners especially if they start or import a database because some things looks really really good and some things look really really shitty because there is the idea the full qualified name and the, and there is the tip it is the the reason why it's uh, why it's working most of the time is if you have a name property uh and you don't have a xf default property then uh, it just assumes that the name is the default property. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why sometimes people are suffering. Why is it working for some classes and why is it not working for other one? It's because you yes. have a name property. But but, but 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 name. But I think it's a good decision to to uh, do the name as a default. But if you are working, especially for the for the Spanish audience or for the German audience or for all foreign not non English audience. Uh, it you have named your names right, but it, in German name is the same like name, but we, mm -hmm. for example, call it Bezeichnung, and uh, uh, most of the time, especially for business uh, kind of, of of operations or title or or some kind, but it's not name, name uh, not probably name, uh, and it works for the english part but you have to tweak it a little bit um probably this would be a good uh feedback from my side especially if you're if you're uh importing the data if you're importing the database for example from from an existing database structure uh and you have somewhat consistent naming in your uh, legacy database uh, that you can tweak uh, this on a global scale. So for example, you can say XAF default property uh, dot default property name. Oh, that, that, that will be like super neat because you can change, I mean, because we have but that. I, I have no Spanish. idea if, if, if that's in, in reach of the compiler or of the XAF uh, infrastructure. So. Uh, I, I, but I guess, Dennis, I have no idea. Uh, if you talk about uh, XPO uh, designer that uh, no, 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 or... uh, XPO designer can help you with that, but it's just like uh, I am going to import with XPO designer or entity framework, for example, and I just want to rename the XF default property name that is named to and for example, another property bezeichnung. like nombre in spanish or, or nombre or or a bezeichnung or uh, something else so uh, xaf can reflect uh, the name name 
based on 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 that static property but it's just an idea it, it uh, would it, it, I, it would help. I don't see uh, I don't see problems uh, with that idea it's just an, a matter of one option so yes yeah it, it's so, just it's just uh, imagine if you Im import a database uh, uh, an English database everything is named name there as the default property and you don't have to specify the XF uh, default property at all it's just uh, redirecting the, the default property name of the XF default property. Yeah, yeah, I understood. It's totally, I understood it's totally confusing, uh, but I, I think you get the, the point. Main, uh, the main uh, issue is that uh, not every custom business uh, object uh, has an, a name or number or what, whatever yes, it's yeah. called. So the, it's that, uh, that's, that's often totally different. Fine. From... That's totally fine. But uh, for, for example, for the task, if if I uh, if I would would uh, write a a, a, um, a class in German, it wouldn't be class uh, task. It would be uh, I, I can't think in non English. It's it's a, it's a it's a to do I guess no. Uh, uh, but it, it wouldn't be the string. Uh, the the name wouldn't be name. It would like uh, thing uh. to do. Um, so ultimately, yeah. ultimately, the thing is that uh, you have to go to your class and specify something. Yes. Anyway, and we could not avoid uh, this step so far. If you have ideas, <laughs> I <laughs> have an idea. I, I know how to solve that, but uh, it it would re it would uh, require to uh, put some metadata inside the. Uh, Data, data is the keyword of SAS, yes. basically. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, Dennis, uh, if you you use a name for a default property, uh, maybe you can allow us programmers to set uh, the specified word to be used as default property. That's exactly what I, what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Manuel's idea, and I'm fine with that. It's it's, it's okay. just a feedback. It's a feedback. Yeah, yeah uh, I was talking that it will not completely solve all the cases uh, anyway. So it's ninety percent. It, it's good enough with ninety. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Blazor and uh, Visual Basic. Um, unfortunately, uh, Microsoft didn't support uh, Visual Basic in Blazor. So and, we... uh, and Razor. Razor at all? They didn't. Yeah, yeah, work. yeah. Yeah. So we also don't have a template for Visual Basic, so only C Sharp for Blazor. And uh, also. But let's make clear that that's that's a really really important. You can use your VB stuff uh, in your Blazor application. It just have to be in two separate projects, and there's no templating support for. VB in Razor, basically, because we, we did almost the same one time, but with Samarin. Samarin doesn't yes. support Visual Basic also. So yes. you make everything in a class library, and then you consume that class library in your yes. C Sharp yes. application. Yeah. And yeah. basically, the what is missing is the templates in general, because .NET exactly. is .NET. That's that's that, 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 it can be F Sharp, I guess. That, that's that's the thing. It can in, in F sharp. It can in any any language that is in in uh, that's compiled to .NET. That so the main thing that people don't get, I guess, is like, oh, Blazor is only for C sharp people. Yes, it is for the templates because Razor only is a mixture of HTML or any markup language and C sharp. But you can cross use everything you have in VB. You yeah. just have yeah. to put it in your own class library. That's uh, the only limitation you have. So yeah, and, and here you can uh, use the technique techniques I described earlier for adding modules, uh, business yes. classes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this way it will help. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just wanted to announce that uh, a new Blazor tutorial. Uh, it's uh, a simple project management. Uh, management application and we are now working for uh, a new tutorial 
for our main demo applications. It will have dozens of articles for like for WinForms and WebForms. So I, I hope it's coming in at the end of October. So, so stay tuned. We will definitely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're waiting for that. <laughs> and uh, while we are at it, I want to announce uh, two help topics on customizing uh, property editors. Nice. We have just published them today. Yeah, and we have it, we have been waiting it, for that one. It's it's saying pre-release software in the header, so it's it's <laughs> really really early. <laughs> yeah, but we have done property editor and they have changed twice, so we have to redo the property editor afterwards. So this is nice. That's that's if you're on the early train. So uh, I I wanted to introduce that the uh, uh, the blazer train uh, uh, whistle because uh, there there is a, a the, the blazer train from. Uh, how, how is it named from Carl Franken? Yeah, okay. from Carl Franken. So I have a blazer train every every time I wanted to do every time somebody says blazer, I have to. You see, to do a toot. you see, Jose. But now I, I do a toot and then. <laughs> nice. You see, Jose. You see, Jose teachers. That was yeah. we went to the last blazer road shop in LA. Then it was cancelled because of coronavirus after that. Yeah. But you know that the world stopped. But it was a really nice um, conference and that guy really knows about what he's talking about. Yeah. He can tell you all the tricks about Blazor. Yeah. Uh, but, but the thing is, the thing is uh, Dennis, it is basically exactly the same. Uh, I didn't see the, this post. I, did, I, I tried some early, early stuff, uh, I think uh, six months ago, or uh, at least with your first alpha you gave, gave me, uh, I don't have used the component render st uh, stuff, but basically it's uh, the same as with any XF control. Yeah, it's really a similar concept. It's really, uh, really straightforward. Uh, you just, uh, how to say, the difference is that you, have to respect platform so you yes, have yeah, to uh, sure. create uh, your view yeah, in, ra yeah. in Razor and also you have to specif uh, specify uh, how Some to say kind of bindings yeah 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 an adapter uh, but uh, uh, the, 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 there's this one question I have is mm -hmm. I really 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 thought and had really really difficult times uh, and that's the main reason I never got into ASPX uh, component sharing, property editor sharing, like this stuff. It was always the problem. I had to do some really, really, really hardcore uh, code intensive stuff so I can get um, uh, uh, markup into some compilable thing that you can reuse. How is the reuse situation right now if I want to write a reusable uh, property editor for uh, XF Blazor right now? Because with WinForms, it's easy. You write an editor, you write a property editor um, adapter, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, register it or provide the user some kind of re registration option with an extension method or uh, or use the standard things with, with module binding. Um, how difficult is it to to write uh, a custom control, a Blazor control, provide a property editor and ship that, for example, as a new get? Uh, I would say that uh, it's uh, similar to WinForms, yeah. but maybe a little bit uh, more Different. difficult. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it depends uh, if it, you need to 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 do custom CSS and custom uh, yeah, of course, uh, JavaScript. Of course. Yeah, okay. But uh, if it's but if it, if it's C sharp only, for example, uh, is it the same step? Pack it into the NuGet and put it out there. 
yeah, because we do this with XF default property editor, so we already do this. So it's so uh, that's, that's neat. That's really nice, neat. Nice, nice. Uh, and, and that's and that's and that's the thing I I really really like about uh, Blazor because it is so similar to every other component render technology. Throw it in in into a DLL or a package, consume it. And, and with Net5, there is the CSS isolation, JavaScript yes. isolation, so a lot yeah. of neat things that is just package it, everything together, just consume it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, of course, to create custom editors uh, with XAF, you have to know how to do it first. Yeah, that, that's, that, that, that's sure. That, 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 that's that's uh, uh, component development isn't easy, but I say the the for for me the the most part why I never got into ASPX is it was way too complicated to share things with with other people. Yeah, because it's a different architecture. It's yes, a yeah. client server, so it's more yeah, difficult. Not, not only client server, you have to do uh, put that thing there and do that thing there and 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 import that there. And if somebody uh, something breaks, you throw it away. And now it, you you import a package, or, or uh, and it works or it doesn't. So that that's that's its main. It, it like like with a WinForm package. If the control doesn't work, throw it away. Use another one. So, yeah, and um, I wanted to uh, promote our oh, the big ones, yeah. doc documentation. We have uh, released uh, the first uh, beta version, uh, unless I'm mistaken, a week ago, and uh, we have described what we have done for XAF, for Blazor in the first place. Uh, it's awesome stuff. Customers I, I, with, with active uh, universal and the experience subscription subscriptions can access these bits and test it live, it's because there are really interesting things like reporting, conditional appearance. Uh, what else? Validation. Uh, the, the compact, yeah, validation. The compact team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amazing else? job, guys. I, I have, I, I, if I saw that the first time, I was like, okay, it's it's going a little bit slow, but uh, it's like six months or eight months later, I couldn't imagine you pull out uh, a reporting. Validation and competition appearance, sure, but a reporting viewer, that's awesome. As a congrats, guys. That's that's, Thank that's you, really Manuel. really impressive. Uh, uh, and I I want to finish with XPO because it uh, yeah, yeah, also they, got they some been, amazing they features. Been people on the uh, in the chat asking for this exactly. They were waiting just for to see the the web API data store. Yeah, um, as you know, uh, .NET Core doesn't support uh, WCF, so we we provided a replacement. Uh, we provided a uh, web IP data store service and web IP data store client that allow you uh, allow you to create distributed applications uh, with .NET Core and uh, setup is uh, quite straightforward. So you uh, just register a singleton class. Web uh, API data storage service, specify connection string, and uh, then you can uh, create a controller and uh, call uh, these data store methods. The implementation is quite simple. There are only three methods, and you have your server ready. And you can connect to the server using uh, built-in uh, web API data store client. That's it. Uh, uh, That's so nice. I, 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 uh, that is, this, um, now I'm totally confused. Uh, uh, it's not about that this is confusing. It's, a, it's, a, it's uh, on which level is it? This is really on the data level. So it's the same 
thing like uh, Jose's web, uh, web API thing, but it's uh, now a supported thing. So it, it, does, it, it is database independent from the transport layer. Yeah, of course. You yeah, don't have, and you don't have uh, to have the persistent classes on the server side, or am I wrong? Uh, it's a uh, database uh, agnostic and it's a, uh, how to say, it's a replica of uh, the yeah. classes we had for WCF. So it's okay, absolutely yeah. the same, just uh, using HTTP and uh, a new so the server don't really need to know what persistent objects you have. It's just a connection between the Yeah, database. yeah. It's just I data store. So, yeah. and yeah. It can be, as you know, it can be anything behind it. It can be a cached service. It can be a net of uh, other services. That's a great it idea. It, it, it's, it's a great idea. It, it, is, it isn't that open, but it, is, it isn't the goal <laughs> to be open. <laughs> it, it is the goal to make it happen. Yeah, and uh, it's possible because uh, this is universal interface. Yes. And yeah, it has yeah. just three yeah. methods. Yeah. And what about uh, there, supporting there, there, like there. other type of serializations for that? Because, for example, if you implement the site at the store, but you I, cannot I, do the modifications. Like there, you cannot there, serialize there, them. There, there was there wasn't one option to choose the serializer. So, I guess that was a thing. I I, I have a question. Does this work from web API, uh, from from uh, Blazor uh, WebAssembly? Absolutely. There is, it's because there's the everything. Because everything there is needs to be async. I yeah, to... uh, can we, let me answer. Yes, it's the first example that we made. We have made a WebAssembly example, and oh, the second example was awesome. Xamarin. So okay, that's awesome. We have tested awesome. against it, um, especially. So made a, made another thing. I took uh, three days working on making a prototype and idea. Totally obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> from, yeah. the, from the last I just, from the last I just want yeah, to say basically. to I just want to say to everyone who is in the chat uh, uh, asking questions we have a lot of them we're going to get to all of them one by one so we're going to finish the presentation okay. and uh, uh, Dennis, Dennis how much slides two one uh, it's, it's last the last slide, slide okay. and I also wanted to uh, uh, answer a very popular question that I get and uh, it's about um where to find uh programmers to do some custom development for me so to do some training so and uh just wanted to promote uh the page we have on our website uh, at, at the end we have a sec special section here you can uh, see uh, third parties like uh, Jose, Manuel, Dave, also Jose, also guys from Dev Park, uh, and uh, Safari guys, and uh, other others, and we also have uh, links to uh, links to community resources like uh, expand framework modules, Safari modules. And also, we have links to our team blog where we uh, I want post to... news quite often every month. Uh, there are some development news, some tips and tricks. I want to add something quickly. Uh, of course, this is great for everyone who is maybe watching the video later because I'm definitely sure that everyone who is in the chat here with us. Uh, like again, know the value of being in the community. Uh, but I want to just give a quick uh, promo, if I can, to uh, Isa Tahiri, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, with Apostoli. They are trying to promote a module for a Chrome schedule task for SAF. And they are looking for some SAFers who want to join together and, and sponsor that project financially. But it's really uh, affordable, and as most people get on that, that train, uh, it will be uh, cheaper to everyone. And I think that that's a really nice model. 
Uh, I just want to say, if you uh, don't know what you are talking, what I'm talking about, please reach out to me. I will send you the link on the expand uh, GitHub repository. Uh, is a uh, he reached out to me. I'm one of them that say, yeah, when we get enough people, I'm all on board to help out. So I think that that's a nice feature. So I like when staffers get together to, to, to help each other. So just want to say that. Please continue. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think I'm done. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm sorry that it took a bit longer than I planned. But I it hope always it was helpful. It always than takes than longer. <laughs> we are actually super on time right now. We are yeah. super on time. We are, we are we're only 50 minutes over. So and I, I have guess. to say, I have to say, we still have 26 people. We are always over the board with the oh, time, and awesome. we still have a lot of people. So thank you for yeah, being that's here. Good. At that's some awesome. point, that's one awesome. time I will ask at the end of the meetup, hey, everybody, turn their camera on, let's take a picture on something like that, because I really appreciate <laughs> everybody. <laughs> okay, everyone. Yeah. but we have three more hours to go, or at least two. <laughs> so, uh, again, uh, also, uh, Manuel and Jose, they, you can talk with them about stuff by hours, so you have to stop there at some point. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So thank you, Danny, for the presentation. That was really nice. Really, and really awesome. we have a lot of questions about that. You will see it on the chat now. I want to come back to the chat and go one by one. But I will uh, let Manuel quickly go about his last post and then we continue with the questions that I have and the one that are on the post. Okay. okay. Thank you. You can take my screen now. Thanks, hey, thank you, Dennis. Dennis. And I want to say, Dave already joined us. I think that he's having an issue with his camera or his microphone or something. But he should be with us uh, in mind for a <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, hey guys, I, I can talk at the microphone, but uh, <laughs> okay, I right, just moved some of my cameras in a box somewhere. <laughs> yeah, hi Dave. Nice uh, to hear you. Nice to see you, Dennis. So, uh, uh, should I just share my screen? It's like. I think I, that I if will... you share your screen, it will stop Dennis sharing. So there is no issue there. You don't have to wait for him to stop or anything. You can start sharing, Manuel. And uh, about a question that I got. You're, you're, the, you're looking for the button, right? <laughs> about a question that I got. No, I, I, I am, I am, but uh, but uh, I am a little bit confused about the UI. And just a quick uh, answer to a question that I got in the chat. I have invite Apostoli to the meetup. So whenever he's free, I think that he's busy with a lot of projects or something. He's free to join. He's invited all the time. So he's a special guest. Whatever you guys want to like bombard him about question of expand framework. But that was that was something I was uh, was uh, uh, asking uh, if we can do some like uh, split time thing so we can do Europe guys and 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 uh, American guys from the time zone. But no, one thing that I want I'm to fine do with, with with one thing that I want to do with any suffer who wants to join is let's start doing a Twitch and let's, let's not do anything crazy. Let's go to the yeah. tutorials. There are a lot of nice tutorials that DevExpress yeah. already have, all those yeah. XPO sub-security. Let's do it together. Let's see if that works. Let's see if it doesn't yeah. work. So uh, I, I, actually, Javier, I just got like at the beginning of the meetup, some people ask me, when are you going to do a live uh, coding uh, session? And you, you, I, I, you, told, I told them like, well, we have a, we have been practicing Twitching, but you know, it's in the <laughs> list with so, so many one, other one stuff. One of the things that I want to do is to stream the Meetup live. And I still have not found the right, and the time to get it right. I, now I have a friend who recommend me a stream jar that is supposedly have like a backstage and I can pull you on the screen or things, nice things too. So you can have it live on Facebook, on YouTube, but I haven't got that part like, Time, time is high, it's hard sometimes like to get everything. Okay, Manuel, please, let's not oh. make this too long. I, 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 I am trying to stay on a 10, 15 minute uh, pitch up. Okay, let's put a stopwatch, go. I'm just kidding, go. Hi, hi, <laughs> uh, hi, hi guys, I'm Manuel. <laughs> I'm an DevExpress MVP since uh, eight years. Uh, Dennis, how long am I MVP, six years? I have no idea. Uh, I, st I stopped counting. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there, there's, there's just uh, a little teaser on my side. I worked really, 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 really hard the last 
couple of weeks, I think it's three weeks right now, uh, getting my block uh, up into new shape and new design uh, and getting some more, uh, it, I didn't do a lot on, on, on more content. I, I, I just tried to do it in a more uh, representative way. And it's like, it, it's like um, my first post is like 2012. So it's, it's, it's a long time ago. And there is a lot of posts I did. Um, some got more traction, some got less traction. That's just normal. But there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, of course, I'm not Scott Hanselman. Uh, and, but there is a lot going on. And, and, and I, I really, really think it was, was time to um, go into a more prof professional shape. So I, I, I really, really tried hard on, on my blue, new blog. Uh, on the new design, on my de design language, uh, doing you all a favor and uh, putting on your favorite uh, screen color. So you have a dark theme and a light theme and being responsive. And oh God, there was a lot of stuff involved uh, making this thing fast. And uh, there are just a couple of techniques I always use. I, I have to, uh, I did built this all from scratch. So there's nothing in there besides the, um, besides the uh, uh, code coloring. Uh, there's everything written from scratch. And you can apply this. It's just CSS. You can do this on any XF application or something like this. <laughs> it is the thing. It's, it's just um a blog it's static html it's written with pretzel i wrote all kind of stuff about it like uh, uh, uh moving from funnel web to pretzel was 2016 mm. and the need i i saw why i i want to to go uh and write this thing new or or do the the the, the um, presentation new is like, yeah, there is a lot of, of uh, the web change, there's new technologies, there's this fonts, there is stuff, uh, uh, mobile phones, responsive first, blah, 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 blah. There's just two things I wanted to share. Um, when I switched to Pretzel, uh, it was like HTML only and there's this uh, I needed to way to communicate with the with the community, and there is the th uh, there is several uh, plugin authors out there or JavaScript kind of drop ins where you can like discuss. I used before uh, we can drop this in and it's in there and uh, it does all kind of tracking, um, and. It's totally out of my control and it's out of GDPR, what's really, really hard thing to do in, 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 in Austria or in Europe. Um, so I did want to have a system that don't spy on people uh, and really just do the thing, do it fast and uh, really provides a great look and feel and uh, um, way to interact with the community. And I think I, I nailed that quite a bit, uh, but there's some techniques I use to to uh, um, make that thing really, really fast. And and we talked uh, before the stand up with Jose. Uh, his uh, his internet is like rather slow today, so uh, he we are which with of... Jose. We, there are like ten here. Yeah, there are ten. ten yeah. <laughs> uh, with our new MVP, Jose. <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, like uh, a shout out to Javier. Yeah, do the blazer train stuff. We have a new MVP in the yeah. house. So, uh, but the, the thing is like uh, uh, to make it more accessible for all the people and, 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 and doing like high and low contrast stuff and, and, and all the stuff. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, that, do, that does a lot of web development. Uh, it really, really helped me 
um, making this thing really, really work well uh, is the Lighthouse thing in, in uh, Chrome or in, 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 um, uh, or in Edge. And it, it really shows you, you can, you can go uh, into the, uh, it's like in the de develop extensions. It's like, well, uh, normally it's F12. So it's well as well, developer. I don't even. If you don't understand that, we won't. It's under, <laughs> the, oh, there it is. Development tools. So, and they have your normal development uh, browser. One question, Manuel, but. Yeah, I think that if you press F12 in the keyboard, yeah, yeah. it will just open that. Yeah, yeah, but it's not on every keyboard. Yeah, or what is the fan of that? What is the fan of yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but uh, the, it's a normal developer tool, so there's this lighthouse button, and the lighthouse button is is it's just really it, it it provides you. Sorry, it's in in German, but the, it 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 helps you identify problems on your website. It will work on any website. I am hitting my production server right now, so it's in docker.delegate.at. Uh, I just hit uh, make a, a, a thing. It, it will go to some all crazy kind of stuff and just tries to rate my stuff based on accessibility, performance, CEO best practices, blah, 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 blah. And uh, for my last, I don't have a, a comparison screenshot right here, but uh, I went only kicking Discord, uh, uh, Discord and doing some kind of optimizations. And it, it is a static HTML page after all. Uh, dropping down from nine seconds in Austria to 1.1 seconds. And this is like an average on 3G network. So, uh, that's that's really impressive numbers. There's a lot of stuff going on, like with accessibility. If you're using your screen readers, stuff like this. But uh, I never would get to the point without working to the with the community. I ask people on Twitter, on on, on Facebook. Uh, I ask uh, my brother Jose. Alex is a is a really really really. Uh, it's inspirational uh, part of the community. Uh, and that's the, the thing uh, that, that drove me forward. And, 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 and how I was thinking about what has the new design to offer. And there's the shout out to all the, ooh, no, that, that's too large. <laughs> uh, to, all the MVPs and everybody, everybody helped with the project. project. Um, and it's responsive and all the kind of shit. You can uh, try it out of your, on your phone. Uh, but the thing I really, really wanted to in engage and why I'm talking about it, I am five more minutes or something yeah. like this. Four, four is four. Four, four, four is okay. So uh, I did a lot of, of, of community work in the last uh, eight years or more. So I just listed out a, a, a few of them, some with, with more traction, like the, the package builder, the fluid model builder, image assembly importer, uh, I guess uh, that was the posts with, or the projects with most stars on GitHub or the most comments on my blog. And the thing about all that open source and working with the in the open and 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 putting all that stuff together, it really, really, really takes time, effort, patience, uh, and it's difficult. And but nonetheless, I really, really enjoy working with all people out there suggesting uh, and using this stuff because it makes me happy when, when, when I can solve problems. And sometimes the community is, uh, it, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, thing is every, every contribution counts. So uh, 
Is it a spelling issue? You, uh, is it just a, hey, I am really, really happy with, you, with your work. Uh, give me a star on GitHub. Uh, this is not working for me. Can you help me so we can make a better product? Let me, let me, get, let me just add something to the point that you're making. So uh, for me, I have been following Dennis, Jose, Manuel, Yamach, uh, Yamachan, Adam and Dave for a long time. And if you are like me that you read the Super Center all the time or you are following all every blog and you're following every Twitter, at some point you feel that you know these people and you have never met them, you have never even spoke to them. You are just reading their comments, reading their answers, reading their tweets, reading their blog. So I always say that being here with them in the same uh, meet up in the same meeting talking with them the first time was like a dream come true and uh, this is what i like what i'm trying to push the community to grow because when you break that barrier there are people like us and they are willing to help it's just that sometimes we don't ask we don't we are like like okay i i will never ask dennis he's the pm of SAF. he i always see him answering on the support center but i will never ask him directly something he's too busy for me but he's not He's willing to help. He's glad to help more than that. If I, I have reached, like, and this is true story. I reached to Jose and he was glad to help. I reached to Manuel, he was glad to help. I reached to Dave and Alan, they were glad to help. I reached to Danny, they were glad to help. And I try to do the same thing. If anyone who is reaching to me, I try to help as much as I can. So that's the whole goal of the community. That's the whole goal of this meetup, of the whole goal of like working together, collaborating together. We are just in the same boat. We like SAF. It like you must probably have done something that I haven't. I have done something that you don't. How can we collaborate? How can we bring more people to our framework? Bringing more people, making the framework better is for everybody. We are going it, to like it's what we use every day. Jose, it, it's it's a thing about open source of working in the open, especially especially, but it's it is an awareness thing. Uh, I guess we we have to speak about in in in. In 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 uh, uh, in XAF or in business development world, because in 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 JavaScript world everything is open. If you steal something, <laughs> nobody cares. It's it's free lines of JavaScript. Nobody cares. But those lines I I I, I highlighted here. So it's 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 the thing is if you if you you can make any contribution, I am really really happy with any blog post with any comment, uh, any, anything, it, it isn't hard. Uh, make a pull request and it's, it's, it's a lot of time going, going into this work and getting the feedback is like the, the, the it's, it's like the money or, or, or the fire that's li living in, inside uh, of the whole of the community thing. Uh, so it's like a, a giving or, uh, or uh, giving or taking thing. But it doesn't matter if you can't contribute uh, in, 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 in content. Sometimes if you are happy and, 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 and you're really, really, really helpful, and I'm not begging for money in any kind of ways, but sometimes the best thing you can do if you only have a, a, a company that doesn't allow open source con contributions, for example. Talk to your manager, hey, we, we use that kind of stuff. Uh, that really helped us out. Uh, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, nobody cares uh, about the money, about the, the amount of money. It's, it's, it's like uh, going back and forth with, uh, 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 there's a lot of going on into blog posts, into uh, doing this kind of stand-ups. There's a lot of time involved, preparing, uh, all and all and all. So uh, we do this for free. I guess almost all MVPs do it for free, but there are a couple of points I, I have to uh, uh, get on the on the on the level of uh, where uh, community, community can be frustrating sometimes. So people spam, spam, spamming up uh, Facebook groups with with, with like. Uh, 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 advertisements that aren't uh, uh, supposed to be there or being ruled on, onto other uh, uh, kind of community members or 
the really, really hard part is like, where is the, where is the line between helping others out really, really for free and, 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 and try to uh, get involved with, with each other uh, and doing free support. And, uh, and I guess the, the main caveat I have here for the free support is like, uh, there is, um, yeah, the, 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 the thing is, uh, you got, don't go into the store and, and asking to build your a car. Great. Get your shit together. Get your shit together. Uh, we are ha happy to help you to build your car, but you have to build your car yourself. Uh, guys, uh, I have uh, one, my uh, view uh, about the Express, about XAF. Uh, it's mature uh, last two years. Uh, before two years, uh, it's uh, growing, but uh, not uh, is enough to use in uh, enterprise solution. No, that's not true. Um, but uh, 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 that's an opinion. But why do you? Yes, think... of course, it's my opinion. No, no, it's my opinion. But but why do you think it's not an enterprise-grade solution? Uh, about uh, three years ago, uh, it was slowly. Uh, two years ago, uh, the express start be faster uh, that uh, uh, years uh, before. Uh, I observed this uh, since uh, eight years about, uh, and I trying do something with this. Uh, last years it is okay. It is looks great. Uh, it is good idea to grow the uh, solution, grow to the community. Uh, Jose, Manuel, uh, Dave. Uh, you are great people to uh, allow us to uh, do this well. Uh, but we going to uh, optimal solution. But it is not optimal at this moment. Uh, there is no optimal solution uh, you are talking about. Because that's, that's, that's the thing. You have to do your homework, uh, homework at at home the, the, the thing is uh, there is no uh, enterprise one fits it all solution it depends on your needs on your platform on 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 on, on your channels on uh, your clients on your architecture there's, there's so much stuff going on except can't provide a one fits uh, suits it all solution uh, i think i would like i want to ship my two cents in here and we got that uh, type of comment a lot. Um, and I usually try to tell them like, okay, uh, you and you only know your business problem. Yes, yeah. So you know the ins and out of that, and that's impossible to solve with any type of framework. In the end, your, your business problem, you need to go and tailor the solution like really, really in small changes to optimize because for example yeah. we have a case in a customer from europe where the application was taking too much time loading because he was loading the stuff in every click of the application basically and keep them in there so of course that pattern will not help if you do that in any other framework like adf from oracle the same will happen because yeah. in the end i we we have been doing load testing lately and the conclusion that we end up in the end is that the framework add really a small overhead to your, I mean, to, to your performance. So basically, if <laughs> something takes like one minute to load, like from that minute, I can tell like for most of the time, like 90% of the responsibility on how that will load uh, is, uh, your custom code, your classes, your ORM model, and the other 10% or maybe even less is what XPO and SAF add. So the overhead is really little. 
So the plan is like, okay, I have these tools, I behave like this, exactly like this. How can I use it to fix my business problem that is this? And in the end, in, like you have to do like the match. You need to yeah. tweak both yeah. of them so you can reach a middle point. Because yeah. if you like the most common uh, uh, comment that we have is like, we have the DevEx, uh, Dev Express Universal subscription and SAF comes with that. And we don't use it yet because we don't know how to use it. We come from a traditional development uh, shop, basically. That's how, how they proceed. So what I tell them is like, well, SAF is not different than any other technology. It will not add any other, any more overhead that any other control will add. But it's about understanding your own business problem. Because yeah, sometimes yeah. people comes with, oh, this loads too slow. You're loading like 10 million records. Now, let, let me add with something. Let me add, columns, so. let me add something else, uh, Jose. Uh, you remember the podcast that we hear from one of the Microsoft top of change. I don't remember the name, but it's someone that is really knowledgeable. It, there is no, he knows what he's saying. And they ask him, uh, what do you think about uh, ORMs? And he said, don't use it. You need to know the, the, the SQL directly. You need to get your data so you'll be as performance as possible. And I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. There are scenarios where it, it makes sense. To, like for me, you need to know the, like the ORM give you, I don't know, because some people also argue about the word abstraction, but it gives you like a, a, another level that you can use so you don't have to deal directly with the SQL. But for your needs, for our needs, like I have to ask how many clients do you guys have that have can, 1,000 concurrent users. How many people does have this client? If Jose, you have that client, you have money to do it, especially. Yeah. Jose, Jose, it's, it's, it's basically exactly, exactly what, what, what I'm going through. You but are let me, here. Let, but let me finish that one. Also, in the YouTube video, there was someone also the saying, uh, SAF uh, is really hard to customize anything in the UI to, to change an action on the menu or something. No. And, and my, my question right there is like, is that faster than making a form, dragging a menu, dragging a toolbar, dragging a, putting a menu? So that's depending on your needs. So I, I'm not yes. saying like, I'm not saying that SAF is the solution for everything. It's the yes. solution for me. Yeah. It's the solution for me, for my clients, for what I want to develop, for what I have been able to accomplish, SAF is the perfect solution. I'm not saying that is for everybody. I'm not saying this is the holy grail. I'm just saying. And yes. uh, there is also like, uh, sorry that I, we all caught each other with this answer, but a uh, long time ago, like I was in my twenties and I was in my first job in the United States and the owner of the company asked, hey, like we need to move our ERP from, ERP from it was an ERP based on Unix, I think, to Windows. So we came with this big plan, uh, like this ERP will cost like $200,000 like 20 years ago. And we will take like two years on making it because it was for nine countries basically. But in the end he said like, no, that's not my business. I don't make data layers. I don't make, I mean, so you need to know where you need to put your money and your time. In this case for us, uh, what makes the money is the consulting. So we don't want to spend that much time in the code, like doing a crude operation, doing a big screen with hundreds of fields, one by one. I mean, that can be easily handled by the framework. And we just tweak the small parts. So you need to know, uh, like in the context, I would say, what is your business? It's, a, say, it's a 90, it's a 90, problem. But, yeah. but the, the, the thing is, I, I, I just uh, reserve four more minutes or three, I guess on it's 25, 25. One thing, one thing here is like everyone who is here, they already know SAF. They already like SAF in some point. So we are not well, here to sell yeah. SAF. We are really yeah. like SAF. We are here to share the knowledge and to, to collaborate together. And again, we yeah. can have the, this discussion, uh, we say offline, but it's online. The, the, later on. the thing is, uh, if you if you're really, really, really interested in a long, long post, getting into all details, how to uh, measure your performance across different ways you can represent your data in XAF, and it's like seven. Manu, uh, uh, I, I think you know, it is the greatest article about XAF. 
No, it's the greatest article about uh, Xav performance, and I missed out. Okay. Five, five. In, in my opinion, points. in my opinion, is the greatest uh, article about Xav. Uh, this explains many things, and um, uh, I think it's a first lecture for everybody who wants to use Xav. With uh, a lot of um, lot big, or, big thanks for this work. Thank you. Big thanks. Uh, thanks. I thank it, you. I thank you. Is 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 a great, great, great work. Yeah. The, the 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 main thing about it is it is a lesson. It isn't a, 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 a put this in your code and it works. It really, really means you have to go to the details, try it out. Uh, and try to apply the concepts. It's not about uh, uh, this is a review. Uh, my code is slow. Put it in your code. It, it's faster. That that's uh, that's like uh, snake oil. It's like with with this. Uh, uh, I have this tool that makes your uh, computer or Windows uh, computer faster by cleaning the registry. It's not that thing. It's 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 it's. Deeping dive into the internals and 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 describing the characteristics about queries or or at least uh, some kind of of a perspective about how you can use them how you, how they behave differently. But, and, uh, uh, but 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 I don't want to go too deep into the uh, into the performance. We can go into the performance uh, uh, afterwards into the questions. I just want to finish my my uh, 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 my community post because uh, there is a lot of stuff going on and 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 and, and I, I I don't want to to um, uh, do any any uh, po pointing fingers or something like this. It's just uh, I I wanted to describe what what I I hope to get more from the community. Uh, 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 getting more feedback, getting more uh, people involved, writing open source, write, write, or, or, or just commenting, or, or, or using the stuff, giving it a star on GitHub. Every okay. everything counts. But try this, try this as a joke, uh, but uh, uh, your article have one uh, one bad thing. The bad thing is no conclusion. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, it, it doesn't. It, it, it is a meaning. This article is a meaning. It isn't a t technical article. It's just there's there's a lot of work. I, I just want to go to, to go through uh, 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 why I wrote this article, and I am not uh, thinking about anything else, but but promoting the blog or, or something like this. It's just what I value in the community. And, uh, and we had the discussion in the MVP team. Uh, and there is some kind of, of uh, uh, direction we are going in, in, in like with... Manuel, uh, as I, I have said, uh, it is great work. This is a great work. Uh, and I uh, have uh, no... But bad idea about this. Uh, my, um, can you add something to starting programmer idea about conclusion about your article? I, I can. How uh, to do this well? Uh, I, 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 I can uh, just just leave a comment in 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 in, in the blog or or something, and I. If there is enough traction, I will uh, grab it up, and if there, then then I can write an uh, article about it. But uh, the thing is to really, really close up because it's uh, I'm 50 minutes over or 10 minutes over. Yeah, um, I have a lot of questions more that we're gonna have yeah. close to it. Uh, the, the 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 thing is that the uh, the really, really, really last thing I I, I really love like to shout out is all that work is a, a, is a lot of work it uh, takes about two to three days to work uh, to write a full technical article and i think
think uh, um, Dennis uh, can agree on that because there are technical writers on, and I am not a technical writer. Uh, I'm a programmer and I'm a consultant and uh, uh, there is a lot of work involved uh, doing a whole documentation post or deep dive tutorial kind of stuff. So uh, if you can't give anything back to the community, I am pleased or I admit to uh, put this on every screen I can put on. You can support me on GitHub sponsors, Patreon, buy me a beer. If you buy me a beer, uh, you can uh, describe a flavor down there uh, and I will use that on the next community post, uh, on the next community uh, stand up. Yeah. But it is a lot of work uh, and just it, I need to get some money back at least for uh, doing all the kind of stuff, uh, their service involved, blah, 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 blah. So, but last but not least, what I really, really wanted to talk about is the new design. One more minute, uh, Manuel, one more minute. Yeah, one more minute. <laughs> Uh, one more minute, blah, 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 blah. I'm sharing my, my screen. The new, the, new, the, the new design, it's like a lot of uh, stuff, new design language. Uh, with, it's like uh, you have all the tech clouds over here. You can uh, ha, uh, do, do uh, light and dark green colors. I, I described that. But the neatest thing about all that kind of stuff is uh, there is a new commenting system and I teach this uh, discuss for that. So, uh, and I think for the next uh, couple of minutes where it is running, it's just, you can post your uh, thing. I am just posting my stuff. Three minus three is zero or is it? So, uh, the lost is lick, lick. Thanks, Alex. Uh, what this does is like there is some kind of server behind the scenes and uh, you have the preview comment here and uh, over at HTTPS, uh, GitHub, Xenial, and I go for this short one, block comments. You can see there is the repo uh, and there is my entry. And it triggered a build that redeploys my uh, my uh, blog. So let's look at that real quick. And if you want to do something like this, uh, let me know in the comments. So there is a new comment coming from this repo. This is comments. And here is my new blog thingy building and I think about four minutes or something like this uh, the block will suddenly create a new comment underneath. nice oh I didn't reply <laughs> but I have to go to the bathroom real quick yeah <laughs> okay Okay, let's do a quick recap, recap quickly. Dennis has been answering questions on the chat. Uh, I'm definitely going to support Manuel in the next uh, round of beer for next meetup. So let's continue. Okay, let's, we talk about this. This is the, the survey that I put on the Facebook group that who use model designer, uh, module designer and application designer. And most of the people, what they really need is the model designer. They can do the controllers and code. They can add modules and code. They can do all of those. There are a few people like Manuel and sometimes Jose that they don't use designers at all. But that's, I, I, I believe that the designer really helps for someone who is starting to, to get up and running. And then when they get better, they can decide like they, they say that they have an issue and the designer is not loading up. They can take care of that part. So uh, we discussed the VB.net that actually is going to be no going to be moved forward. They are going to maintain it, but they are not going to add new features. Uh, using a SAF, a, an XPO business object outside of SAF. And right here, uh, Dennis showed a new web API data store. 
but we always have, have the all data XPO service that DevExpress provide. We have the WCF, we have the XPO web API that Jose uh, developed that we will have to rethink if we're gonna keep supporting that because maybe with the new one DevExpress and take care, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let, right here we have tutorials about the uh, using XPO with all data, I think that all data for, and actually even Jose has a, an article about using GraphQL with XPO. So if we continue, we can see here that the, we talk about the solution with or the blazer that is with blazer that is still not together with the main one that hopefully will come in the future. So uh, we talk about how to learn SAP faster and one of the person who grabbed me in the chat privately, he was saying, hey, I have, I have used DevExpress for a long time, but uh, I'm starting to use SAP and I'm really liking it. So again, read the support center, read the ticket, read the code or the demos, study, uh, learn SAP architecture and not only integrate with the community. Community for me is the most important part because it will help you there get along. Uh, I will talk about the best practice of on 20.1.7 uh, and 20.2 about the breaking changes that we have there. And it's a, a quick story. We have a client and uh, Jose can attest that he likes the old templates. He didn't want the new one because it looks similar to the Windows forms or I don't know. Clients are the one who's paying. So those sometimes they have the requirement that they want. So right here we have the breaking changes from 20.2. Uh, and some other uh, questions from the community. And from here, Jose can take care, Manuel can take care, Dennis can take care. So let's start from the bottom up. So the SAF Blazor, any of one has tasted with Net5 already? No, oh, yeah. but I guess I will put it on the, I mean, uh, for me, no, I mean, but we have it on the list. Yeah, we have tested internally. Did and the, it was fine. Did the Blazor? Uh, can you repeat, please? Manuel? Did I, did I hear Blazor? South Blazor, ah, the Blazor yeah, Every time he, he hears Blazor, he will like do the whistle. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so we have a, we have someone asking about South Blazor and the Net5. So it's, uh, I haven't tested personally, so it's great that Dennis uh, provides us that answer that is already been tested uh, internally. But, uh, Javier, also remember that one time we try uh, Windows Forms with Net5, remember? Yeah, we did that like two months ago, I think. Um, yeah, but I don't think that it was with Net5 also. It was with the, not, the last Net Core for three, Net3 three Preview 7. Yeah, it was something like that. that. Yeah, I, so we need yet. to wait for real Net5 to come. I did this last week and it worked really, really fine. So another but question. It, it, but it, it, is, it is the RC, so Probably there, uh, I didn't get into the So the question that we got in the YouTube channel about customizing simple tasks, and this is a question that sometimes, uh, and actually someone yesterday wrote me in Spanish through uh, WhatsApp and asked me, hey, I have been using SAF, but sometimes it's hard to customize the UI. I to would like, I would like, menu? I, would, I would like, no, they weren't not specific, but I would like sometimes some of those examples. Just give me a specific scenario and let's do it together. Let's see how hard is in comparison of doing it from scratch in comparison with do it. And let's do it together. Let's re realize to see if you say that it's really hard to customize the UI. I'm, I'm all on board to do it in, in, in a Twitch, to do it in, in a, something in YouTube Live. So yeah. I, I hope that the software that did that question get uh, forward. Uh, the the SAF Blazor will support uh, mobile devices, absolutely. You can actually go to the main demo and use the demo and it's a beauty. It's a beauty, the actions get uh, uh, collapsed. So you have an action that pull up all your actions. You have all your, your, your editors get one behind the other one. So it's really nice. And the picture is a beauty. You have a picture that you can select. You have, there is a lot of neat things on SAF Blazor. So one question for Dennis. Uh, we have in Win Forms and in uh, Web Forms uh, application show you strategy, show message, and it show you the is that uh, coming in 20.2 or does not come in 20.2? Uh, I can't answer uh, right right now. Uh, if possible, please submit a question in the DevExpress support center, and we will research ah. and give you a precise answer. Perfect. Thank you. 
Uh, there was another question on the chat, and Manuel, this is for you. Let's make it short. Uh, uh, update in the end user application, like the that was I, in the yeah, please. I, I I I I see another blog post that takes three to four days to to really really precise this. I did a deployment uh, uh, thing with MSIX, getting stuff into the store. Um, and there are caveats, but it is just, uh, it, I'm just talking for WinForms because uh, on the web uh, and in the browser that doesn't uh, apply. Uh, probably with, with uh, um, uh, how, how are they called? Progressive web apps. That's, that's a thing. PWA. But the major thing is it isn't about getting an updated application to the end user. It is one part of the story, but the major question is, where is your database? Who updates the database? Who owns the database? How do you connect to the database? Uh, and then you can decide which deployment strategy is right for you. Um, if your database is really, really static and doesn't change a lot, um, you can use any deployment strategy there is out there. You can use click once, you can MSIX, you can uh, now with, with um, uh, .NET Core, you can do copy paste deployment or single click with, with uh, everything in one assembly. Uh, it is, and that's the main uh, uh, thing we talked earlier, uh, there is no one size fits it all. It depends I think that on your. What I like to answer there is SAF application are regular than their application. Windows, yes. yeah. web forms, relation. There are some things that work better with XAF and work uh, not so good with XAF, but basically it doesn't matter. It's a normal uh, .NET application. And it's a deployment strategy. It doesn't depend on XCF particular. But I had uh, success with almost every technology so far. So, so another MSI, question. MSX. Another question is uh, how can we add CSS classes to elements in SAF Blazor? Javier, you're the one to, to answer that. <laughs> so you have to answer yourself. I, no. I didn't try that so far. <laughs> I I have done it, but I don't think that is an approach that I will I can share. I think that that will I, I I'm doing like workarounds. I'm not doing it a way that I can say, oh, um, this is a the recommended approach. Until but, net five, I guess everything was a workaround. Exactly, and I like I like the net net five CSS isolation that you can put your your component and your things, and it comes with the CSS and. Then the, the Blazor creates a unique ID just for that uh, component. It gets compiled into unique exactly. CSS, yes. yes. So, and uh, I left this one. Okay, let me go to this last one and come back. This is what I was talking about. I have a friend that asked me. I yesterday. can't read that. <laughs> that is in Spanish, in Spanish. I, yeah, I know. He was saying the three things that, that stopped him to keep going with stuff was UI customization because he was having issue with making UI customization. He was saying that uh, uh, performance, everyone asks about performance and scalability. I think that there is a misconception that it's going to be slow and it isn't. So that's what he says that all that paragraph, he says like, okay, a customization in the UI, performance. We have talked about that for a while, but I just wanna bring it up. That is something that is recurrent that people keep asking the same thing. And I would like, again, two things I would like Example of, and um, I will be the first one to do a 65,000 uh, records list view, and I will show how long does it take to load if you do it, if you architecture that right. And I would like people that do, have done custom design on SAF to share a screenshot. They don't have to share a code, just show me that what you have done and that is uh, doable. Like in summary forms, when they start, everybody was like, you cannot do beautiful UIs in summary forms. And there is a rep over there that is summary form beautiful something that it has really crazy, beautiful UI. So if you have done something, let's share it. Let's put a lot of screenshots so people will start 
losing that, that no, it's going to be ugly, it's going to be slow. Let's get out of the way. And the last question that I left because I want everyone to share is like the same one, sharing security system between several staff applications. So right there, Dave, uh, Manuel, Jose, Dennis, whoever want to give at least I, a, a... I, I can get a glance or, or at least a, a, a small input because um, I, I, I just want to make sure uh, people on the right track because the XAF security system includes authorization, authentication, and permissions. So it's like who, what, and when kind of questions of every security system. And I didn't go to university to learn all that kind of security stuff, but uh, uh, to get the concept, who is a user? Does, is he allowed to access any resource and what kind of things he can do with a resource? is like three things in university. I know in, in business world, that's not that uh, split it apart, but that's one aspect and that's who is the user. It's like uh, we see it with, with Google or Microsoft accounts or all the kind of OpenID Connect kind of stuffs uh, uh, or solutions out there um, that we are, splitting finally who is the user and what is he allowed to access and blazor ui has a new provider to uh, uh out of the box the first time not a sample uh or i'm a right tennis to split uh who is the user and 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 uh what he's allowed to do uh I, so, uh, uh, to be honest, I missed uh, uh, the first part. <laughs> I, 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 I just was talking about uh, in the new Blazor UI, there is a, a provider to authenticate a user against OpenID or the OpenID uh, Connect. Uh, so. Yeah, we provide a universal authentication uh, API that allows you to uh, use any absolutely any provider yeah and 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 that's the, that's the first part because that identifies the user who is the user and afterwards it's security system as always with xaf so uh, uh, you ha internally uh, you yeah. certain, certainly have uh, an a security user but you yeah. also have uh, some ID from your external system. Yeah, uh, and you, but, and you but, can link between them. Yeah, but but the th the thing is basically is, uh, they, they, you you split it apart, uh, authorization and authentication, and that's the main thing. I uh, uh, when 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 talking about sharing security system be between XAF applications, we need to identify what to share about the security systems. You can share the whole database, you can share the users, you can share the permissions. Usually, Emmanuel, uh, I mean, how we got asked many times is like, basically, um, they want to see like, for example, uh, application one, they do have these permissions, application two, they do have like even a different set of permission or a different set of types but they want to have like basically like an active directory abstraction or something like a directory yeah, to abstract yeah. uh, the permissions in all the places because I don't know how it's in every place in the world, but at least in El Salvador, like the government agencies and the bigger companies, they have this, um, this role of administrative person for the application that is the one who create the, profi the user profiles and so on. And depending on the entity, they might have one of each person for uh, each system, or there is one guy who is the master of every system and he say like, you cannot print and you should print or you can scan. So yeah. but, but, they but, want but, to do it like that. Yeah, but, 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 but to, to enable all of that kind of stuff is like, you have to know who is the user. And that's the yeah. most 
the most uh, uh, difficult boundary uh, of going a uh, multi application like uh, uh, the, the thing is doing a, com a, a completely com centralized approach of access I guess or, or, or data access or or, or or kind of authorization is uh, difficult but at least knowing who is the user and you have a centralized store like with Google or Facebook accounts or your own OpenID Connect thing is at least I know who is the user and it is well known up, up, uh, uh, across the whole system. And every system has its own, own rules about which data and uh, which actually, operations you can I, I think, access. Manuel, also part of the question is like, I would say like, because depending how you see that question, uh, maybe people is asking, is it possible? And if they are asking that is yes. Basically, you have all this infrastructure and code at your disposal. And is you can this actually do it. Is it available goal? That I, it it, it, it depends thinking. because we get approached a lot for that, but no one have say like, here is the money, do it. Yeah, that, they that, have that this thing, idea like this would be nice to have if we can have it out of the box, that, that, but that, it requires that, too much like uh, business logic. I would say like uh, the, 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 the main the main thing is like uh, what I think about that kind of security or who knowing who the user is is absolutely crucial, and that should be shared across all of the uh, uh, all of of, of 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 all applications you are running on. Mm -hmm. uh, this user should never be allowed to access this resource again because for example got to jail for example it's it's really it's artificial but the thing is like it's like revoking an api token so you have a central place where you can manage access on 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 resources but the nitty gritty detail is like on the uh, uh, application itself. And there is where I think XAF security system really, really, really shines because it's centralized to a database. Only the authentication is uh, um, brought out into a more centralized system. So every application can provide their own mechanisms but there is no one size fits it all i guess as i i i, I don't think there is um, and if there is you can that is called uh, active directory and nailed up uh, yeah uh, sorry manuel uh, sorry manuel um, go, go on for another um, and thank you for everyone and you all for chatting you and knowledge me with use. Uh, the content you blog manual as good content and keep great work for good content at the study hour. Um, I have a question for your authentication solution in reference for Active Directory level system permissions database. Uh, for example, a Windows Server or level minimal functional requirement the Windows Server 2.12.9 or Azure, or is compatible all Windows Server up to directory database? Example, 23, 28, 2012. Well, did, did I recommend this? Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I, I'm not following you. Uh, uh, for authentication level with active directory. Uh, my console is, is or compatibility or level functional Windows Server version? Or uh, is only for I, I, um, I think I can take that one. Um, I'm not sure if... if, if ba basically, if I, if I... the idea is um, people get a lot of confusion regarding Active Directory identification. There is a part on the NET framework where you can ask uh, any, uh, I think it's some provider that is, you can ask, I have this user and I have this password. Is it valid on this context? And usually the context might be the domain or 
the, the, the same computer is a domain also. It's not different than, than an Active Directory. It's exactly the same. So you just pass the three values and it will return. Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's valid. Sorry, uh, mm -hmm. And in this case, all permissions, the SAP manager is not for SAP manager permission and role user. But, uh, but, in this case, it's for authentication role Active Directory permission. I, I, I and and I think that, that that's exactly the, the the thing people get wrong about about security or or uh, authentication and authorization. Uh, the the thing is, you need those three values to get sure you know the user. So it's like logging into Google with your with your with your email and password and getting a token back. And if the token it only says you are uh, you, basically. And then the other side of the API or the other service has to interpret it, what's inside your token uh, if you are allowed to request this permission or, or uh, uh, this, this resource. And those are two to totally different shoes. The one is getting who is the user and the other is what yeah, can so, the user do? Uh, Fernando, to answer your question is like, yes, you can do the authentication to know who your user is or if it's valid uh, at, in an active directory level. But okay. regarding the permissions, uh, you have to do your own implementation if you want to handle it through active directory. Yes. It, they, it, they don't come out of the box. They will still use self permission like yes. manner. So, because that, we got that question also often that if we authenticate against Active Directory, if we can set the permissions also through Active Directory. And those are different animals, I would say. Yes, since as I, I will always remember this line from Manuel that it's just code. You can do whatever you want. So basically, if you take that as a higher like paradigm, it's like, okay, I authenticate against Active Directory. Now I can try to manage to do an API call or something like that to grab the permissions, but that you have to do it yourself. I mean, yep. there is no out of the box solution at the moment. Of course, anyone can create one, Manuel can create one, I can create one, but we usually spend our time uh, like doing research and development, most of us, I will say, or basically our customers and we, usually get more practice in the stuff that the customers pays for uh, in general. Authentication is a good example. Uh, yeah, you, uh, can, uh, yeah. you can authenticate every user against Active Directory or open no, or, 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 or you get like, even if you do that, uh, you can enter in some other problems because for you example, can, we, have, we, we have a case where the active, active Directory was a mess, a total mess. Yeah. And we depend a lot on it. And sometimes the user were not able to authenticate. Why? Because we depend on something that was broken. Yeah. We were depending on an Active Directory implementation that was broken. I mean, the Active Directory itself, the database was like uh, having problems. Yeah. So that will basically depend on, on uh, the goals of your, uh, uh, of your system. And also in the, I would say like, in the entity that is using the system. Because for some entities, it's like you need to go through this authentication uh, flow and then you need it, to ask permission from this place. So it's, it's possible, uh, but um, but it all depends what you want to do. So it's not, there is no, as Manuel said, like one Joch, it, solution fits all. Yeah, there's the, 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 the thing, then, then it's totally, uh, uh, if you talk about XF security system, it is uh, authentication is like, is this user allowed to log in? Who is this user? And permission is like authorization. What resources can the user access? And for authentication, there is like authentication base, system authentication, we, uh, 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 in, in web forms, we had uh, Active Directory and Windows authentication. 
with uh, username and password or the basic auth authorization or for example uh, google or microsoft cloud stuff like this so knowing who the user is is one thing and everything else is your coffee you don't there is no one site fit it all based on xaf or any other provider i know but it's the most comprehensive system that uh, allows you to track down tables records fields actions and on I, I will, I will on a permission add. level so on the authorization level I will want to add something. But it's like it's decoupled. It's decoupled. Nothing in in XCF security system is coupled to uh, the authorization. It's coupled to the. Yeah, I, I always got got those. Dennis, Dennis, are in the chat. You can also add a create roles, sub roles based on Active Directory roles. You can read those roles on create yes. roles for, the, a, for you. That, that, and the authorization the thing, yeah. part, the authorization part will be based on the permission stored on the database of the security system. Yeah. So and authentication is who is the user, and authorization is what, what can the user actually, do. And exactly. there, it, and that's where XAF and shines. The, well, the, yeah. there is also one thing, uh, like, but it's not about this topic, but it's about the security system. I was doing a pitch to a customer like two days ago. And uh, all my pitch was based on the security system. It's like, if you want this type of system, see, we have this, and this is the Ferrari of the security systems. We don't have to make it ourselves. We can use it out of the box. But I mean, it was not about authenticating against other applications. They just want uh, their, their, their application to contain uh, filtering by user and by role. And they wanted to have uh, field-based security. All of that come out of the box with SAF. To do that by hand is incredibly difficult, as you cannot imagine, because I remember the first system that we make on .NET like 20 years ago. Uh, it's like, it's done. No, you need to make the security system. And then you know how to suffer. I mean, it's complicated. So. OK, uh, I think now we have one, one last question. That is the only one that I have seen that is not answered, not through us talking, not through the chat. Mm -hmm. And it's from Domingo, one of the first questions, like at 10 AM, that what is the advantage of this of disadvantage of using the association decoration at both ends? So for example, invoice customer, if I declare only the customer property on the invoice, I already have the foreign key. The collection in the customer invoice is necessary. Oh, okay. I can answer that question. I guess not in 100% detail, but I can answer that in, in some kind of impact. Um, for XAF perspective, the best way you can do it is always do the association. But if you are on a hot path in your application, uh, you can get into troubles performance wise, sometimes. But it Association is just a hint uh, how XPO loads data from the database. And you have the backing field so you can have easier programming access. Uh, why use, um, uh, don't use an, an association property uh, on the one hand side, uh, on, on, the, on the collection side if you don't need it that's my my uh um advice because uh if you don't need it it doesn't pay any uh performance penalties you usually but you, but you, but but you lose the, the uh, ability to uh, do that reverse kind of thing where if you want yeah, you, to you, n you, and you, n to that, one that that is one of the i will say that uh we get a lot that type of question i mean it was not phrased like that but it's almost the same yeah. that uh and i think that people from developer express have answered this like thousands of millions of times yeah. it's like 
when you do your own or i mean let's say that you're starting with stuff and you're like six months into the development you're like getting to know the tool and you feel like you manage it already the main thing that people start doing is like they have used associations they yeah. associate everything to each other because yeah especially if you're using SAS, it looks really neat that you go to one side and you see one point of view like from the master and detail then you go to the detail and you see the other point of view backwards so it looks amazing because it does but yes i mean that will work with a few hundred thousand records maybe or again depend on your your design but in the end if it's too tightly associated Copper. Copper, yes it will yeah. like loop uh, then you have to read um manuel's um n plus one article because he will do that and so if you understand how it's loading and this i am breaking my... the barriers here yeah the the, 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 thing, the the thing is uh it it, it, it it's a pitfall because you 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 have to think about the domains it it, it 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 is like you have the silos of tables it is like orders order items invoice blah 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 you have this tree of tables that is all related to invoice for example and you do and you have a customer and you do all the kind of customer relationships with it and then you really 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 will suffer because uh if you do the really cross joint things no database in the whole world world can optimize for this shit um the thing is think about your problem domain think about your object design and really really think about domain driven design and, and think about layering uh how uh records relate to each other there's no problem uh, getting a foreign key in there but then you have to do the reverse engineering and 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 uh and say okay i i want to uh list uh all invoices by customer for example um that's rather easy but most of the time it's easier uh, like you write a reverse query in 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 in, in sql so if you're like uh, i want the five best paying customers for uh, a, a product for example uh to cross join or or uh, uh to the reverse in 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 uh xf at, at least so uh look at all uh, roles in in the in the order items reduce it to the customer reduce it to the invoice reduce it to the marketplace blah 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 and then do it uh, and then do just a listing uh it's th it's thinking about the data problem not going top down but bottom bottom up so it's like not give me from all customers all uh, all invoices all thingies so but going from every invoice record going up until the stack is done i think that's the actually we, we we do have a case model also where we were working with a customer the system was windows forms and what we did was to to basically um we didn't do the association on the one side but we create some type of controller that figure out the association and open pop-up windows yeah with, but, with the but, information but, that will it, be loaded it, it it would it would create some kind of of index no yeah i mean index, you yeah. uh, it's like For normal key, forms yeah. that you're always in some type of a normal form in the database so it's yeah. the same you're always in yeah. some type of n plus one yeah type of yeah. problem it doesn't matter how you fix it you will make it pop up in some other place so, okay guys i think that a a great uh, comment that uh, dennis put on the chat is to get a better understanding of what to take to write your own security system they have 10,000 unit tests for each ORM and also thousand UI functionality tests. So think about yeah, that. When you yeah, want you, to, you, to create your Dennis, I am shouting on you for five years. Please release your unit tests with 
the source code. <laughs> but I, I think that never gonna happen. Yeah. It should well, take uh, 10 years or so, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So to, ex let, let, to extract. Let's uh, see you on 2030 when Corona's finished. <laughs> where, where, where is Dave? Uh, do, do, do we have any questions left on the chat we didn't? No, I answer. think that we covered them all. And if someone has another one, please feel free to put it now. Or just you can contact us later on to any of us. We'll be happy to, to answer. Either way, you can put it on the Gitter, you can put it on the Facebook group, you can put it in the LinkedIn, everywhere. We are there to help. I want to thank everybody. We still have like 20 people here with us. So thank you again for showing up. Thank you for participating. Thank you for supporting the community. And uh, see you next month. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank bye. You, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye. -bye.